Big tech companies like Meta, Google, and Amazon have been laying off a staggering amount of workers, tens of thousands of people. Microsoft and Google, within just a couple days of each other, within 48 hours of each other, both announcing they're laying off 12,000 people in Microsoft's case, 10,000 people in Google's case. And I think we aren't giving these layoffs as much due as they actually deserve. Uh, right now, folks are saying, oh, well, that's just in the tech sector. It's a white collar layoff. It doesn't really matter as much. But the reality is these are still hundreds of thousands of jobs. There wasn't really one area of focus we're seeing getting cut. It's kind of across the board and at all levels. So what do the widespread tech layoffs mean for the larger economy and those persistent recession forecasts? The first of the layoffs really started with Meta, which laid off about 10,000 employees. And this came after their earnings last year when they said, look, we're spending so much money on the metaverse, we're losing you know, up to 13 or $14 billion on this project. And investors hated that. Meta stock fell more than 70% and lost more than $700 billion in valuation before Meta decided to lay off 11,000 workers. The stock ticked higher after the announcement. Uh, they get the message from the street loud and clear. We uh, we aren't clear about what Metaverse uh, return on investment would look like. Having said that, if you can control costs in Metaverse, I think that would be a positive. The next big tech name to lay people off was Amazon. Up to 18,000 employees are getting fired starting this year. It was announced last year. Again, same story over hiring and over expanding during the pandemic. And now these companies feel the need to cut costs. We've, we've certainly seen a slowdown in the advertising business over the last six to nine months. And so this is clearly the response to that to try and preserve those margin pressures. These tech giants that are laying off employees are essentially tech conglomerates. And so tech layoffs across the board look like scary numbers. But if they are in parts of the businesses that are structurally weaker or perhaps in decline, that is less concerning than if we have job cuts in, say, the high growth areas of the business. And in someone like Microsoft's case, that would be an area like Azure. The big reason why or the common thread between all of these big tech companies for their layoffs is they grew too quickly during the pandemic. There was this glut of spending on tech products when the pandemic first hit and people were stuck at home and businesses had to find ways to make help their employees work from home. So that means buying a lot of computers, buying a lot of IT services, Zoom subscriptions, you name it. That all caused a lot of money to be injected into the tech industry. And some people in the tech industry, some executives, got a little overconfident thinking this growth is going to be sustained forever. Let's hire now and get ready for that growth. But they over projected it. And now we're seeing an economic slowdown and everything's coming home to roost. Now that we're seeing these companies refocus on their core missions and focus on what they believe is going to be the next wave of tech computing, specifically artificial intelligence. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg conceded the same point in the company's layoff letter to employees. This was ultimately my call. Um, and it was, it was you know, one of the hardest calls that I've, I've had to make in, in, in the 18 years of running the company. Largely what's happening in tech is that they are right-sizing after the COVID surge in demand. And so that demand surge was off trend. They hired to accommodate those surges. And so they hired well above their organic trend and growth rates. And in many cases, not only was there a, a increased need, we'll call it for infrastructure expansion and those sorts of things, but also you had just such a rush of customers. You needed salespeople, you need customer support, other levels of, of operating costs, essentially. But in other cases, there are businesses where uh, through time they've been very sort of un cost conscious. So they've been investing for growth at all, all costs and for that reason have fairly weak profitability relative to where investors perceive they should be. If things do get worse, you'll try to see more consolidation. The big guys are going to be okay. Google's going to be okay. Apple's not going out of business anytime soon, no matter how bad the economy gets. But what you do want to look for is some of the more weaker companies, those growth companies that either had no profits or were barely profitable. Those could either go out of business or become really attractive acquisition targets for one of the bigger guys in this environment.